So today we will talk about some uh, great ideas in convolutional neural networks and sorry again for the lateness. And uh, so here, here is the content. The fir first part I will introduce the basic ideas in one dimension and two dimension and three dimension uh, convolutional operations. And then I will introduce the idea of transposed convolutional. So uh, that idea is, is very helpful and important if you are uh, dealing with some GANs or some visualizations in CNNs. And then I will introduce the, one of the very beautiful and very important idea in convolutional area that is called one times one convolution, which uh, it is in the paper networking network. And then I will uh, share some ideas about the fully convolutional network. And then um, it's, the, uh, it's the part I enjoy and I love most is the uh, skip connection. Uh, skip connection is first introduced by Kai Ming He uh, in his paper, ResNet. And then I will introduce the basic idea of dropout and why we cannot use dropout, the combination of dropout and batch normalization at the same time in your network. Yeah, maybe uh, some of you might have some questions about how could I improve my model. Uh, here is my suggestion. Maybe, you, uh, maybe it is time for you to do not use the dropout and the batch normalization at the, at the same time. And then I will introduce some other normalization methods. Um, you know, uh, in the normalization area, um, beyond n not batch normalization, there are a lot of different ideas like uh, weight drop, weight normalization, layer normalization, and instance normalization, and group normalization, okay? And then I will introduce uh, a uh, uh, an idea which is called depth-wise se separable convolution, which is introduced uh, in uh, one, of the, uh, one of the famous uh, paper in Google, um, written by Google, which is called MobileNet. And finally, I will introduce some other visual uh, tasks like uh, beyond image, images classification, uh, like uh, semantic segmentations, object detection, and instance uh, segmentation. So let's begin. Okay, so first, uh, actually, uh, here is one very quick convolution animation animations here. So uh, blue maps here are the inputs, and the cyan maps are the outputs. As you can see here, the convolution uh, is based on three times three filters. So after you, you could, uh, this is your first output, and then you uh, move it uh, to the right, and this is your second second output, and this would be your third output, and you will move down, and this is your last output, right? So this blue maps are your inputs, and then after the convolutional operations, you will get your outputs here. And this is actually, this is uh, animations about deconvolution. So deconvolution, rather than improve the size, of the input, it will, uh, this one will make the size of your input smaller, right? And the deconvolution will make your input uh, bigger because here you will pass some other information like this and this, and after the deconvolution part, you will get this as the output. Okay, and this is uh, another example. So actually, in this part, we will pad zero to, uh, to this part and this part. And we will use the uh, convolutional filter to calculate the first output. As you can see here, this is the filter, and this is the output. And actually, these are three different channels. And after you add a bias here, and you could calculate the first output, okay? And let's play a quick example here. 
So if the input volume is around uh, 32 times 32 times 3, and there are 10 uh, 5 times 5 filters with stride 1 and pad 2, so, so the output volume size, how could we calculate the out, uh, output volume size here? So because the input volume is 32 times 32 times 3, and so the output volume size is uh, 32 here, as you can see here. This, uh, which means that this input part is 32, and this, the height of it is 32, and the width is 32 also. So you will, uh, you will add two patterns here, which is 2 times 2, because the pattern should be, two, should be equal to 2, right? So the output volume size is equal to 32 plus 2 times 2 minus 5. So the 5 is the size of the filters. As you can see here, uh, you need to uh, subtract the f size of the filter. You're fine. Okay. No, I just point the camera at you. Okay. And, and you need to plus one to calculate the size of the output features. Okay. And because we have 10 different filters here, so the output, uh, the size of the output should be 32 times 32 times 10. So in this situation, you need to first calculate the height and the width of the output. And, and the number of channels in the output is the same as the number of filters. Okay? Because different filters will get different uh, output channels. So there will be 10 output channels here. Okay? And so by the way, so my second question is about how could we calculate the number of parameters in this layer? Uh, for example, so if we just want to calculate one filter here, so uh, it will be 5 times 5 times 3. This, w this number is equal to the number of weights, and then you need to uh, plus one because this is uh, corresponding to the number of buyers. Okay, so five times five times three is equal to seventy-five, and plus one you will get uh, sixty-six. Uh, I'm sorry, seventy-six parameters, because you have ten different ten different filters. So uh, totally, you will have uh, seven hundred and sixty filters. Uh, I'm sorry, seven. 160 parameters, okay? And also here is some uh, quick uh, intuition. Why do we use convolutional neural networks? Because first, uh, the feature of uh, CNN is local connectivity. So instead of connect all the input features, you will just collect some of them, okay? And then it's the parameter sharing. You will use, you will use this filter to calculate the same features for different locations, okay? And these are two uh, intuitive ideas of why should we use uh, CNNs, and then, um, Okay, let's play a game here. So convolution could reduce the model of your uh, complexity. So if the input is a sequence of 1,000 words, and each word is represented as a 100-dimensional vector, so here the input of your model would be uh, 1,000 times 100 matrix and 100 denotes the number of features, right? So if we do this with a normal uh, neural network layer, uh, which means uh, if we do that with a layered uh, linear layer, so how many parameters do we need? Any ideas? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, we need 
this is the total number we need, right? OK? And the buyers should be here. We need almost this parameters. But if we, but if we are using the um, convolutional neural networks, OK? OK, so the convolution net kernels would just be the size like this. And the bias would be just 100. So you, you can see here, there are a lot of parameters. Uh, the, uh, the parameters in CNNs are much less than the linear layer, right? OK, so actually, these are three ideas of why we should use CNNs because of this local connectivity and parameter sharing. And uh, CNNs could reduce the complexity of your models. And then let me introduce the first great idea, I think, in CNNs here. It's about um, different dimensions of CNN. OK? Uh, so we could, uh, uh, this is not very accurate, but it, it is a general idea. But uh, I just want to give you a very quick intuition of different um, convolutional operations. So the first part is about the one dimension convolution. It's like this. Uh, you could use in some sequential model. Uh, actually, you could use this one dimensional convolution in your homework three part two, uh, because uh, it is a, a the input or the training data or the data set is sequential. So you could use a wide dimensional convolution to calculate the features uh, around the sequential uh, or the time dependency data. OK? And maybe the wide dimensional convolution could be used in uh, NLP tasks. And the second is about the, the most uh, common convolution, we could use that in some computer vision tasks. And third is about the three-dimensional convolution operations you could use in some videos. Because in the videos tasks, you need to first convolution on different frames, and then you need to calculate the uh, features around the, uh, uh, around the t time dependency, right? So here are three examples of different types of convolutional operations. And then uh, let me introduce this idea. OK, so this is about transposed convolution. As you can see here, so the blue maps are inputs, and the cyan maps are the outputs here, OK? so. Uh, instead, instead of uh, decreasing, decreasing the size of the input, you will increase the size of input. And uh, actually, there are very two cool applications for this transposed convolution. The first is the visualization with the decommon net. Uh, in this paper, the authors will uh, visualize different features of different filters like this. So for each filters, it will de, uh, de -conver, uh, de -conver, uh, do that operations, or you can call it transpose convolution to show the final results. OK? And another uh, example is about the uh, deep convolutional generative adversarial networks. So instead of uh, you were using this as a noisy vector, and after some deconvolution operations, you will have the final images as your uh, as the general as the output of your generative networks. Okay, so this is the idea of transposed convolution, and then uh, let me introduce some ideas of the fully connected layers here. So uh, yes, yeah, so in fully connected layers, you are not using any uh, pooling layers. You will just use the fully connected layers. And then 
you will use the one times one convolution to uh, to replace the final linear layer. Yeah, I will introduce the idea of one times one convolution in my next slide. But for uh, these fully connecting layers, uh, this could also uh, this could be done after all convolutions because the output of the this fully connecting layer uh, does not store any location information. So. Um, Performing a convolution of on the output of a fully connected layer will be meaningless. So, okay. Any questions? Okay. Mm. Let's let me introduce the idea of one times one convolution here. So, uh, I think. Uh, one times one convolution first is in, uh, was first introduced in this paper, which is called Network in Network. So actually, this is uh, the original inception module, which is a naive version. But in this paper, Network in Network, it, uh, uh, it introduced some, um, like this one, one times one convolution here. In this one, in the original paper, this one times one convolution could reduce your dimensions. It just uh, one times one convolution. It's just like uh, you could uh, understand this like uh, um, um, MLP, but instead it will uh, do that in a convolution way. Okay, so um, in this paper. It will indu uh, it, it will re it, uh, the authors reduce the dimensions by this one times one convolution, and also uh, this idea of one times one convolution is also used in some other papers like faster RCN or YOLO algorithm. Okay, uh, maybe in your homework two part two, instead using the linear layer in your last layer. You could use this one times one convolution instead. Okay. Okay. So this actually this is the idea of polling. Okay. So for example, so if the polling size is two times two here and the stride is equal to two, it will uh, the input uh, is equal to four times four, and after this polling layer, it will be done sampling to this two times two here. Okay, but uh, you should notice that the volume depth is preserved. Okay. Okay. So next, let me introduce this idea again. So, uh, so in this fully connect uh, convolutional neural network, it is getting rid of the pooling. Some uh, some researchers prefer using pooling, but others. Uh, do not think pooling is a, idea, a great idea. Instead, uh, in this paper, it will use uh, this strided CN instead to replace this pooling layer. And uh, they argue that after doing this, their model should be better. Okay. Okay, next. Uh, let me introduce my one of my favorite ideas here. So it is a skip connection. Actually, I strongly recommend that you should use this skip connection in all of your models. Maybe in, uh, even in homework one part two, you could still use this idea. Um, so first, let me give. Uh, so first, skip. Connection was first introduced in uh, Kai Minghur's paper, Deep Residual Learning for I uh, Image Recognition. And uh, let me first give you a quick intuition why this work. So in this paper, visualizing the loss landscape of neural networks. So in this paper, uh, the left part is the uh, loss surface without skip connection. And the right part is the loss phase with skip connection. As you can see here, with skip connections, the um, 
loss landscape would be much better, right? Uh, if, if you are training model, training your own model on this um, surface of your loss, you will be stuck in some local minimum or some very weird points. But if your uh, loss surface is much smooth, it would be much easier for your model to have a good, a good, uh, a good performance. OK? And this, uh, this skip connection could make your models uh, much deeper without, um, without making your model uh, very hard to train. Because there are very uh, there are, uh, there is a very common uh, issue in in deep neural networks. It is called uh, gradients vanishing. So if you if if you are back propagating your gradients from the loss to your first layer, you will find that your the gradients in your first layer would be vanish, um, would be vanishing and it would be very very small. So if you can use this. Uh, idea of skip connection, you would find that uh, it could help. Um, uh, uh, um, it could help uh, restore the gradients of your uh, previous layers. Okay, and the, actually here are two different blocks of this uh, residual blocks. Okay, and questions. Okay. OK, after this uh, skip connection, let me introduce uh, another great idea like this, uh, this inverted residual block. OK, so in the uh, original residual block, the input channels should be, uh, should be larger than, the, than this intermediate features. But in the uh, mobile net paper, the Google researchers found that uh, actually, uh, this could be hap this could happen. The in uh, the channels of the input could be less than the intermediate uh, channels, like this. And it will use uh, so the difference between the residual block and the inverted uh, inverted residual is that. Uh, the, in, uh, the channels of the intermediate layers, if the channels of the intermediate layers is less than the channels of the input, it is the original residual block. And if it is greater or larger than the input channels, it, it, it is called inverted residual block. OK? And let's talk about this idea, job out. OK? So uh, you might have learned the idea of dropout on, on already on Big Shots classes. But here, I want to uh, give you an idea of why could we not using, uh, use the dropout and batch normalization at the same time. OK? So, uh, so if this is your training, training input, and you will, uh, you will calculate uh, so after this is the dropout, this is the batch normalization. So the uh, dropout would make your model like this. Okay. So okay, and it will make some of the neurons uh, doesn't work in each epoch, uh, and batch normalization would calculate the running variance and running mean. Based on the previous um, previous uh, output of the dropout layers, as you can see here, this running mean and running uh, variance is not the total or total running means uh, ru running mean and running variance for the whole neurons. This running mean and running variance is just some of them, rather than the global one. So in your test mode. You could not use this um, moving average or uh, mo um, moving average mean or moving average variance to do the inference. 
because they are different. Okay, because they, uh, the original training training running uh, running mean uh, running mean and running variance is different because they are based on different neurons. This part is just based on some of the neurons, which is not dropout. But this part is uh, the dropout uh, will not work, and the running mean and uh, the running variance should based on the total neurons. Okay, so if you want to get more idea of why why uh, this should these two methods should not be uh, should not work together, you should read this paper. Understanding the uh, disharmony between dropout and batch normalization by variance shift. Okay, and this is the idea of dropout. Okay, so uh, let me introduce some other ideas of normalization. So actually, uh, um, besides uh, the batch normalization, we also have a lot of different ideas of normalization. Okay, so maybe some of you argue that batch normalization uh, does not work in your uh, in your first homework. Maybe you should try different normalization methods. Okay, so uh, here is a great graph. Okay, here is a great graph. Uh, which is about different ideas of normalization. This is the original ba uh, batch normalization here. So in batch normalization, it will calculate the, um, the mean and the variance among different instances. OK, right? But in layer normalization, it will calculate the, run, uh, the running mean and the uh, running variance among different, among a channels, okay, here. And uh, instance normalization will normalize just one instance. And groom normalization is shown like this. It will just normalize uh, different, uh, different no neurons in just one layer here, okay. Actually, this idea, group normalization, uh, was introduced also by Kaiming Her's paper. And uh, you could, uh, actually, I have um, post the reference for the group normalization on Piazza. OK. Actually, uh, this normalization, I, the idea of layer normalization, has been used in the uh, one of, I think, one of the best paper uh, by Google. Uh, transformer here, okay, and this instance new uh, norm could be work could work in this image style transfer tasks, okay. Okay, uh, let me introduce this idea. Okay, um, we have introduced that. The convolutional operations could reduce the total number of parameters, right? Based on its uh, local, connect, uh, local connectivity and parameters sharing. But someone argues that the parameters of that idea uh, is still very high. So we should uh, decrease the number of parameters in original um, convolution, convolutional operations. So here, uh, we are use this depth-wise separation convolution. Originally, uh, one filter will calculate the, the input features across all its, all its channels. But here, in depth-wise separable convolution, we will use different filter to calculate different features of uh, uh, the same locations of features among different channels. Okay, and so here, here is an example about uh, five times five times one kernel iterations. Uh, it will calculate just one channel of the image. So here you can see here. So the height 
of the input image is 12, and the width of the input image is 12 also, and the input channel is 3. Okay? So originally, um, originally, it, if we are using three filters to calculate this input, uh, this input images, we will use this first filter to calculate or uh, order features among across all different channels. But here we just use the uh, red one, calculate the features on the red, uh, red channel, and the yellow one to yellow channel, and orange one to orange channel. And the output should also be corresponding to orange one. And the output of these red channels, uh, I'm sorry, the output of these red filters is, is the red channel here. OK? And if you want to uh, know more ideas about this, you should read this paper here. Uh, mobile nets, uh, efficient, convolutional, new networks for mobile version applications. So Google, in this paper, uh, want to develop a model which could be used in some um, uh, uh, mobile applications. Uh, he wants the model to be really quick and really fast and really efficient. So he introduced this idea. That's why separable convolution here. OK. OK, let me introduce uh, other computer vision tasks. So in homework one, part two, we will just uh, uh, need you to finish uh, tasks uh, like phase uh, classification and verification. But uh, the cl uh, classification tasks are just very basic idea in the area of computer vision. There are a lot of different uh, interesting tasks in CV area. The, uh, the second is this semantic segmentation. You will need to, um, uh, your model need to tell in each image which part is the grass and which part is the cat and which part is the tree here and which part is the sky. Okay? And this, uh, there, are no, uh, there are not any objects here. It is just uh, about pixels, OK? And the third task is to uh, detect object in, in this image. As you can see here, here is a dog, and here is a dog, and here is a cat. So you will, you will use a bounding box or several different types of bounding box to detect where are these objects besides classify, uh, classify them. OK, so in these tasks, first you need to, you, you have to detect where are these objects and classify them to different uh, labels. OK, and the last task is about the instance segment, uh, segmentation. So um, in this task, you need to uh, find where is the uh, instance and segment this from the background. OK? The first is the data format. And it's the first thing you need to focus on is that in iTouch, the data should be channel first. That means for 2D data, you should be the size lines, the number of samples, the number of channels, height and width. And for 1D data, you should have the size like sample, channel, and time. Uh, and for other free world actions of flow, when you release some data with channels that uh, you can have, you must have to check that first. And, and if some example of 2D and 1D data, here mm -hmm. one means in the level of the sample, three means in the level of channels according to the RGB three channels. And 32, 32 is the place that has information. And for 1D data, 1 is the number of the samples. And 40 is the number of channels. It's the same as the data you need in the whole one by And 100 is the time set. And in PyTouch, it provides some layers for you to use. 
years has an evolution of two years and two layers. And package also provides some convolutional one D layers, and you will implement convolutional one D layers yourself in the component two part one. And the usage is pretty simple. You can create and use it directly and create and make up the model. Also, PyTouch provides some low-level function. They are exactly the same as the layer we mentioned about. That step, you need to instantiate the parent in the step. And you may never have to use these functions in this course. So just to stick. Mm -hmm. The deck is zero padding. It's an important tool you will be using in CNN. And in PyTouch, you can implement in a pretty simple way to pass the value to the key argument headings. And normally, you will be using the same value for both vertical and horizontal direction. But you can also pass the tuple to pass different values for different directions. And you can also use the pattern layer before your conditional layers. But we are not often using this way, so we are mainly using the first one. And here are some pioneers we can use. Okay, so if you want to improve, improve the performance of the model, you must use some regularization methods like uh, automatization method. Touch provides some Methods like batch representation to the layer and to the layer to have the representation. The usage is simple. And one other important thing is is concepting. And I believe it should be covered in your last lectures. And there's two ways to do that. The first is to using the cooling layers in the channel, and the second is to using convolution layer in stride. And similarly, we can also, we can dance some in the image, so we can also add some in the image. The usage is similar, but in reality, we are mainly, uh, most of the usage in dance and we hardly use dance Okay. Any questions so far? No. Uh, no questions. Okay. So let's continue. Mm -hmm. Next, we will show some several examples about how to read data. How to read image data. You can use several libraries like Skimish, Pilo, and Apple. And one thing you need to focus on is that the image read from this lab, if we have the size, height, wide, and channel, which is channel left. So you need to transpose the image before fit the image to the model. You you must have the data with channel first in PyTorch. And here is some example of using this library of image, color, and image folder. And in presentation this, we will give a more detailed uh, example of how to use image folder and image data set to read data, which is very, very helpful in order to Okay. And here is the example of basic Cartage CNN model. You need to define your layers in the initialized function and your computation in the forward function. And in Homework 2 Part 2, you need to write a more complicated model than this one. But it's basic. You should learn from this one. And also, we, we are strongly recommend you save your model after each epoch. You can choose to save the parameters or to save the whole model. It will make your life easier when you need to track that. Okay. Uh, in PyTorch, there were also some pre-trained models. And if you set a parameter pre-trained to choose, it will automatically download the model. Um, download the model and initialize the place for you. But you cannot use pre trained model in Homotive Part 2. In Homotive Part 2, you need to write your model from scratch. You need to write the 
in all the technologies. The battery can use this pretty model in the project. So here's an example of how to use it. This is not required in your homework, but you may have a lot when you want to debug in your original linear network. Mm -hmm. And if you can visualize in the output of the layer, it may help, it may be helpful for you to find some that. And we will show an example of it. If you want to dip into the virtualization tools, uh, we do here have we here have some code available for you to do. And here we will show the one example of visualization, <laughs> visualizing. And we and here we want to get the output of the first convolution layer and the first five convolution layer. And we have an image like this. This is the output of the first convolution layer. You can see the output dimension has sixty-four channels. So we have six image here and likely for the first five convolution layers we have uh, 256 channels. So we have one for the region that is. Okay, any question? Uh, do you have questions? No? Some did you have questions? Okay. No question? Uh, no question. Okay, it's important. If you have further questions, post them. Thank you. Thank you for that.